Look at those moves, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Woo. It's, it's very dangerous up here. Yeah. And I don't just mean because of the powerful, sexy moves of our own Dionysian president, L.B. Dio. And you don't mean the sexy moves of yourself, Dionysium Chairman Buzz Moran! <laughs> Speaking of beautiful people, ladies and gentlemen, welcome all of you to the 145th meeting of the Dionysium! Yeah! Yeah! And that's real. I didn't just make that number up. It's crazy sounding. Oh, do you like people like celebrate 150 somethings of something? Yeah, I think they do. It's a sesquicentennial. Sesquicentennial. Ha! Well, good for them. <laughs> All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, over there in the uh, the party pit, please give it up for Mr. Utah Hamrick on the bass. Mr. Jeremy Brock on the drums! Woo! And the maestro, Graham Reynolds! Yeah! Woo! All right! Now, ladies and gentlemen, what can be said about Dionysus that uh, hasn't been drunk before? There's uh, sex, drugs, rock and roll, uh, and ritual madness. So, obvious mascot for our show as well as our attire. Anyway, uh, why talk about Dionysus, ladies and gentlemen, when we can have a toast to Dionysus led by our own Dionysium president, L.B. Dio. Dionysus. It only took us 145 shows to do one about you. So thank you for your patience. We know you're a very patient individual. You never really get upset. So we thank you for that. And I'll have more to say about you in a short while. Dionysus! Dionysus! Whoa! Yeah! That's got a kick to it. Woo! Ah. Just kind of wet our whistle there, but ladies and gentlemen, let's follow that cab by keeping this train rolling. Woo! Good metaphor, right? Now, ladies and gentlemen, when, they, uh, when, uh, when one writes a book, they call him an author. When one acts, they call him an actor. When you direct a film, they call you a director. When you're at the top of the hip-hop game, they call you a Cracker Jack. It's weird, right? When you're all of these things and more, ladies and gentlemen, they just might call you Dionysium President L. B. Dio! Ho! Ho! Woo! Dionysus, what can I say about you that I haven't said in 145 toasts? Well, for starters, Dionysus, god of the root and the vine, and cultivation, god of madness and fertility, theater and music, ecstasy and terror. You were born on Mar Mount Promnos in Icaria to Zeus and mortal Semele. You are the only Olympian god born to a human being. Poor Semele, she paid the price for the honor of bearing you. Semele, the daughter of Cadmus and Harmonia. Semele, princess of Thebes. Zeus watched her sacrifice a bull on his altar and, uh, well, he fell in love. And he seduced her. And as happens every time a god seduces a mortal, a pregnancy resulted. <laughs> Hera, wife of Zeus, always jealous, learned of this matchup. And she appeared in human form to Semele, and she seemed to befriend her, gaining the princess's confidence. But when Semele told Hera that she was the darling of Zeus, 
Hera put doubt of this in Semele's mind. Semele asked Zeus for a wish, therefore, that he would give her anything she asked for. Zeus accepted this and gave her his oath on the river Styx, a, an oath that is the most sacred of them all, one that can never be broken. Her wish was that he should appear to her in his true divine form. Now, and not disguised as a mortal man. Now, Zeus had no choice. He had sworn on the river Styx, but he knew that no god can appear before a human in his true form without that human suffering death. And sure enough, when she beheld her lover, she burst into flames. But Zeus had saved you, Lord Dionysus, her son. Zeus, in fact, sewed you into his thigh to protect you. Emerging months later from Zeus's thigh, you, the twice-born Dionysus, made swiftly for the underworld whence you rescued Semele and brought her to her godhead on Olympus. Hera, having failed in her revenge, remained far from satisfied. <laughs> Doesn't she always? She raised a mob of titans to go after you, Dionysus. And they did, and they ripped you limb from limb. But the titan Rhea, daughter of the earth and sky, restored you to life. Now Zeus, at this point, had had enough. He organized for your protection a bodyguard of nymphs and satyrs and of human worshipers, women called maenads. This was your cult, Dionysus, and to, with it, you wandered through Europe, Asia, and Libya to spread your word. You were unlike all the other gods, Dionysus. Other gods stood aloof from mortals, interfering with them or using them, but never living among them. You were an Olympian too, but your place was with the worshipers who, inspired, who were inspired by you and who followed you. You entered them through their breath and possessed them, giving them your power. This power came at a great cost. The Menids were forever drunk with ecstasy and beauty and with wine and their rites were sexual orgies of violence. Any wild beast that would fall into their midst would be, as you were, by the titans, torn to pieces. Such are the two sides of the wine you brought to man. Wine can bring pleasure and creativity and desire and sublime thoughts, but it can also bring violence, madness, raving, and death. In 6th century Athens, the people made a festival to honor you. And over time, that became a festival of theater, uh, showcasing a new art form, the tragedy. The festival was held every year with the honors going to the playwright with the strongest play. Among those winners were Aeschylus, Sophocles, Aristophanes, and Euripides, whose works are still accounted among the greatest ever written. And so we fear you, Dionysus, and we honor you. You, Dionysus, who were born to a virgin woman by the union with a god. You whom we remember when we drink wine. You who came down to the earth to share your glory with mankind and lived among us. You who died and were born again. Dionysus! Will you take questions? I will, Mr. Chairman. By God, I will. Is there one? Is there a question? There is, the, yes.
Why did I choose Dionysus as the mascot for this merry band? Well, Dionysus earmuffs. We don't usually call him a mascot. That was Mr. Chairman's uh, little innovation a few minutes ago. Uh, but let's face it, uh, the ancient Greeks with their Athenian Dionysia, their festivals at Dionysus, set a pretty good standard for excellence in the arts. And, uh, and it was really the first organized non-religious performance art uh, ever in recorded history. And so it seemed like a good place to start. Plus, as we're going to hear, uh, Dionysus was of particular interest to philosophers, uh, particularly Nietzsche, but, but to many others. And, uh, and so that's, you know, philosophy is sort of one of our core interests here at the show. I'm sorry if any of you bought tickets not realizing that we <laughs> talked about philosophy. That's, uh, that, was, that was probably our mistake, not mentioning that. Uh, yes. Will we be discussing Apollo tonight? I'll be very surprised if Apollo doesn't come up, but I won't be saying a damn word about him. Anyone else? Yes. Well, it's Diana Ross. <laughs> but we say, we say, it's, it's, it is confusing because we say Dionysus, but our show is called the Dionysium. Now, by way of justifying that fact, I would just simply point out that technically, I made up the word Dionysium and I can pronounce it any damn way I want. Thank you, everyone. Yeah.